Zombie, 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 some. Zombie, 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 zom. Zombie. Okay, let's talk about zombies. Now, you might be thinking a zombie is an undead creature, obviously. I mean, how it, can it not be an undead creature unless you're into rage zombies who are infectious humans who are just raised out? Really, in the last couple of years, there has been a hell of a lot of mutations to the zombie myth. Uh, for example, in uh, an episode of Doctor Who, zombies in space were people with robotic suits who had their oxygen supply cut off and basically their suits walked with the people because consumerism. Uh, uh, unmanaged corporate nonsense, so on. A zombie in Call of Duty Zombies is basically the cliche, Nazis bring about zombies in the 90s and time travel and you're the hero and you at some point have to kill yourself or something and uh, really weird ancient and mythical objects and stuff. It, just innumerable ways to innumerable numbers of zombies. Game of Thrones was is set is based on the Ice and Fire novels from the 90s and their zombies are controlled by whites. Whites are clearly based on liches. Now, liches are themselves based on a figure from Slavic mythology who tied his soul to a needle and hid it inside an egg and hid it inside a duck and there was an there was a rabbit in there and those things were hidden inside a chest so you have to in order to kill this figure you have to break the chest follow the duck kill the duck take the egg break the egg and crush the needle and also kill the rabbit I'm a little unclear uh, about whether or not he tied his soul to the needle and the rabbit or the rabbit is inside the egg holding the needle it's it's it's, it's a weird myth it's a it's a very weird myth uh, I'll talk about it in a, another video but Liches, man. liches, liches are were t are typically symbols of of greed. Now the the whites from Game of Thrones are symbols of something. I don't know what their symbols are. The series hasn't finished, and it's so filled with all kinds of symbology and just fan theories ad nauseum. You, you, I could probably talk about 300 different fan theories and weird sexual fantasies involving Arya Stark and whatever. It's, it's weird. It's very weird. In any case, The zombie, as we know it today, is a product of a movie called Night of the Living Dead. Night of the Living Dead is a George A. Romero movie which hit major box office, not only because he 
create a really, really good movie, but also because as he was driving away from set, as he was driving around, he heard over the radio that Martin Luther King was shot. So they went back around, they shot an additional ending where the hero dies, who was coincidentally black, and he and George A. Romero to his death day insisted that he just hired him because he was good. And that whole Martin Luther King thing was a coincidence. And there was no sociological whatever in there. But it's just so filled with social, with meta text. Which raises the question if we are making meta text. We, if we are creating meta text as we're watching the movie, if George A. Romero unconsciously put that meta text in there, if it's just life forging itself into art, art forging itself into life or whatever. But it's, there's just a lot of meta text associated with the zombie medium. That's what zombies are to these days. They are representations of ourselves and so on and so forth. Originally, the zombies from Night of the Living Dead were inspired by a book called I Am Legend. This book, I Am Legend, was a book about vampires taking over the world. But it's like an infectious disease sweeping over the world, creating vampires. If you've seen the Will Smith movie, I Am Legend, that's just one of many adaptations of the novel. There's also a Mega Man. I, I really don't have the time to follow up on how many adaptations of that book there are or how many things are directly inspired by it. But it is a massive, famous novel and a massive influence on this movie. And it's because George A. Romero didn't put in a copyright right marker. Well, someone in the publishing and the distribution forgot to put some sort of copyright sticker on the movie. That movie became public domain. Because that movie beca became part of the public domain, and because it was so popular and it, it had all this meta text, zombie movies exploded in popularity, particularly in the 1980s, a time in US history where Reagan, not only Reaganism was at its peak, not only religious conservatism was at its peak, but also chemicals from cars were actually making people more violent. Let it fuel, let it gas. Gas plus lead has a history dating back to the 1910s, 19-teens, where some guy in New York who was a major forensics guy found out that the plants that made leaded gas made people a bit crazy and people who worked at those plants started killing themselves or started doing all these crazy things. And the companies involved create brought up their own 
experts. If you don't, if you you can guess from my tone, I'm doing a finger thing, air quotes, you know. Experts. I mean, like a hundred years ago, pretty much exactly what's happening right now, with you know the Flint water crisis and so on. So many things to talk about. So little time. And these experts said, well, it's it's all right for the average consumer to use leaded gas. It's just the the power. It's it's just the manufacturing plants that are making are putting people in danger. You see, leaded gas made gas a lot cheaper fuel became a little bit a lot cheaper so people could burn a lot more fuel fuel as they were going around it, it just it boosted the economy so they you know they, they sold lead and gas now the thing is in the 1980s, we can go on and on and on about 80s culture, the hype of church leaders, you know, mega churches, uh, all kinds of cults, Highlander, is Highlander a zombie? No, he's not, but he gets perceived as kind of a zombie, and it's really weird because Highlander's mythology doesn't make any sense since if he survives a massive wound, they would be like, oh, you must be blessed, or oh, you must be the son of a god, and it just doesn't make any sense. If you know anything about real mythology, it just doesn't make any sense, but I'm really sidetracking a lot. So, the word zombie comes from Haitian voodoo. Uh, it refers to a person whose brain has been rotted away, whose mind has been rotted away because, through a neurotoxin. There are actual people these days who are classified right now, living around, as, li as actual living zombies. There are shells of people who have been poisoned. It's not exactly a massive, constant thing, but it's it's rare, but, I mean, neurotoxin. The neurotoxin gets balanced out with uh, a cure to the neurotoxin, so they don't fully die, so they do rem retain some vague semblance of themselves, which is why people keep them around, and it just, it's weird, it's weird. And that person whose mind has been eaten away, that name got applied to zombies. A later movie by George A. Romero also, creating, you know, Dawn of the Dead being set inside a mo inside a mega mall, just as mega malls were becoming these big hulking things and big hulking symbols of consumerism, tilted the myth of zombies back into this whole framework of, well, the zombies are us, and they are mindless representations of us. So you can see how it is, why it is that we think of zombies as popular. And also because they are so popular and their popularity is directly tied into their popular and their uh, infectious disease mythology history. Because of that, well, basically, people 
in apocalyptic into apocalyptic scenarios talk about always talk about zombie hordes are always prepared for zombies the CDC uses zombies as an example for infectious diseases. Comic books about explaining infectious diseases use zombies. Uh, in a similar fashion, DC once made a Batman comic where that warns kids of the dangers of mines and inside which uh, Batman's doing his thing and a kid runs up to pick up a toy, but the toy is actually a bomb. So the kid dies. And it's very sad. But comic, the comic book world and zombies, just so much, so much, so much, so much, so little time. Now... The undead aren't just things that come from the 1950s. We just haven't hadn't didn't call them zombies since before the 1950s. Before the 1950s, we had undead, but they were typically controlled games Game of Thrones style by someone, by some sort of witch or something, or maybe there was a curse, or Frankenstein is arguably a zombie in modern interpretations, even though Frankenstein, as we know him from the 1940s interpretation, is actually Frankenstein's monster, and Frankenstein's monster, If for those of us who've seen both of the Sherlock's, in, of modern times in twenty the twenty teens Sherlock, the movie Sherlock and the T V Sherlock play a patient he was running on movies. Uh basically he's much more uh poetic and a pieced together creature and it, he he's much more like a pieced together corpse than you know, Frankenstein with the two nails in his head. Now, the thing about that is you can actually make a Frankenstein because Frankenstein's in the public domain, but you cannot make the 1940s version because that Frankenstein has nails in his head and it's just, it's Frankenstein with nails in his head, that's copywritten. So when you're doing a zombie movie, check and see if someone has a copyright for your particular type of zombie. Though, zombies in general are in the public domain specifically because someone in George A. Romero's team fucked up and didn't put some sort of marker at a period when markers were required to copyright movies and so on and so forth. So, after this consumerism connection, you see the symbol it's tied to gradually degrade. Mega malls a mall that is just massive in size were novelties in the 1980s. Now, I have to talk a little bit about cities All right now, so bear with me. Cities tend to be around 10 miles away from each other. even when they're not planned to be 10 miles away from each other. There is a specific distance between, uh, actually, sorry, either 10 kilometers or 10 miles. I'm not, I'm not sure if it was 10 kilometers. 
Whether it's miles or kilometers, ten to within cities are within ten to fifteen of those between each other. I'm really sorry. I, I completely forgot whether it's kilometers or miles. And I and I'm not the type of person who typically works with a text, whatever. Cities are typically a specific distance from each other. This is because of walking speeds. You walk close to your living area. There are limits to how much you want to walk. So as you're walking around, there is a specific point that you're not going to cross. You're not likely to cross. Because cities are a specific distance from each other and evolved at a specific distance from each other, whether you have a lot of cars or very little cars, specific stores tend to be at a specific distance from each other. Now we can go into game theory and I can explain hotelings model of so on and so forth but it boils down to there is a specific medium between store distances that people are willing to travel there is a specific distance that people are willing to travel to get to a store to get their food and stuff in a, an increasingly overworked society where the wages keep going down and down and down, the money just isn't there to go to a mega mall and the time availability is just isn't there to go to a mega, mega store. And these big hulking stores, even though people had cars, were just too big to sustain themselves. They were novelties of the 80s. People just didn't have the money to spend on, go, the money and the time to spend on these stores. If they had the money, there still would be a problem because they don't want to travel overly long distances for no reason whatsoever. They're mega malls. They're mega structures. They are by definition hulking and need to be placed in specific areas where people have to specifically go through to have to make enough money. You know? Mega malls gradually collapsed, gradually fell out of favor with people. At some point when most, a lot of these malls had security problems because as a result of cost-cutting measures, instead of hiring qualified security forces, people hired less qualified security forces who were not former cops and those security forces just kept on failing at their jobs and a lot of the malls had things like murder robberies or robberies and there's just so many problems with having a mega mall if you're not putting it in a heavily trafficked area. These megastructures gradually decayed and because people are cheap, rich people are cheap, they would gradually close down store after store after store, keeping the power running and until they cut the power and they did no repairs, and instead of crushing those malls, they just let them sit 
hoping that someone would buy them for a lot of money, but no one ever did, and they just gradually degraded. And that is what became of the symbol connected to humans who are supposed to represent us and in a very, very corpsey manner. So you can see how tying a zombie to a mall in the pop culture consciousness just created this whole meta textual juicy question of how do I talk about this? How do I talk about that? There's just so many subjects that a person can use a zombie for. Now, in modern day, zombies uh, typically mutate a lot. Now, in 28 Days Later, the most critically acclaimed zombie movie of our century, basically, you had this cheap camera. The, this, this movie shot with a cheap camera, but in a very tilted style and so on. And it just hammered down the idea of zombies are us in the popular consciousness. And that, brought, and that is what brought about zombies in the recent decade. Really brought up zombies. You start your movie, your tel famous television show with copying this movie with a sheriff who wakes up and everything's burned down, everything's empty around him and he goes out and then, oh, look at that, there's a tank in there. So playing around with these this idea of that movie continually, continually morphs things. Because zombies are so normalized as the enemy these days, as the villain of the week these days, and we are increasingly more metatextual society, we tend to value movies not just based on how good they are, but also on the references inside the, those movies, on the Easter eggs, on the specific links to other movies. We just have so much availability of me here right now. And because of that, zombies are just getting humanized. Zombies have gone full so circle from vampires, you know, something akin to Dracula, throughout all these symbolic undead representations back to someone who is basically alive but has zombie abilities and he has to eat human flesh to stay alive. Modern day zombie heroes are ghouls. Ghouls from Arabic mythology eating human flesh, hanging out in graveyards. I zombie is a kind of a comedic at times look at zombies. Uh, it's it's like blending the zombie concept with a detective story and a really, really hot former Power Ranger who's also very talented. And I really hope that someday someone does a remake of Event Horizon, but it's like three hours long and she plays Big Mama, sorry, Mama Bear and all that stuff. And also Drew Barrymore basically does the ghoul thing. 
Zombies have effectively morphed into ghouls. Drew Barrymore has to now eat a lot of human flesh to survive, and that's her thing. Where this will lead, we can just speculate ad nauseum. We might see a resurgence of the old classical zombie who's magically based or chemically based and it's just a zombie that is a zombie or maybe you can see the zombiness tied to werewolf mythology uh, a, a ma major aspect of werewolf mythology origins is this idea of someone feeding the gods human flesh and that's why King Lycaon became King Lycaon the origin of the lichen ropes part of lichen mythology all of this stuff you can have them tied to Norse mythology you can have them tied to whatever you want and actually, Norse mythology has itself got a version of the zombie myth. The longer a concept grows, the more things are tied to it, the farther back you can reason its roots. An idea is like a tree. It grows and grows and grows, and its roots just gradually spread outward affecting our view of the history. In Norse mythology you had these undead called the Draugr. Now in, in terms of undead in Norse mythology you have Valhalla. Typically you, you think of undead the dead in uh, Norse mythology as warriors living in Valhalla. But actually, if you've watched, if you've, uh, sorry, if you've listened to or read uh, one of the Rick Riordan books, Magnus Chase, you'll note that there's actually at least, at minimum, three systems of dead people, three places where dead people are sent. You have Valhalla with Odin, Odin's Hall, Valhalla where warriors train and train and train and they're gonna go out and fight. You have his daughter's realm, you have Loki's daughter's realm where all the classical Draugr typically stay you and we are just about to watch to see the release of Marvel's Avengers movie Thor Ragnarok which is going to feature which in mythology features a giant Ouroboros serpent coming out from the sea and fighting against Odin and eating Odin uh, these three periods of winter before Ragnarok and all these undead coming out of hell hell not hell 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 single L hell's realm Loki's daughter's name is hell hell from hell Hell, double L, is what we call hell. And it's just so many things to talk about in terms of zombies. There, if you're undead, you're basically considered a zombie. Unless if you're a ghost, then you're a ghost. Yeah, I'm done.